hi guys welcome back again to my youtube channel if you are seeing me for the first time i'm intentional favor and on this channel i film about faith lifestyle studying abroad and social work and if you want to join us in this family you are more than welcome to do so please hit the red subscribe button below we are wearing red <laughs> okay and also the notification bell so that you get notified each time i upload new videos and to my amazing returning subscribers thank you guys so much for always coming back to watch my videos Guys, as you see in today's video, husband man is here again with me. I brought him back to just like a follow up on um, our last week's video where we talked about the, um, his dependent visa application and the decision and all of that. So um, that video we actually omitted some few things probably because we were so excited. <laughs> I don't know, but thank you guys for the love, thank you for the comments and everything. And of course, in the comment, people were asking further questions that kind of made us remember that oh. We actually forgot this part of it and that's some of the other documents especially i don't know how did we manage to forget that proof of funds oh my gosh that's very important money oh my god no i wonder how we managed to forget about it but like i said probably because of the excitement you won't blame me will you no Okay guys, so we're here to talk about the um, proof of funds and of course answer some of your other questions from that video just to clarify things and also to, you know, give you some hope in case you are worried about anything. So um, the proof of funds basically, um, yeah, so most times if the main applicant is here in the UK and the dependent or the dependent, they are outside the country, um, anything can happen now if everybody is here let's say maybe i brought my husband over while i was a student and i now want to switch and he's also still here with me most times the you the, the rule is that if both of us have been in the uk for over 12 months we don't necessarily need to provide proof of funds mm -hmm. yeah you don't need to provide proof of funds okay at the point of making your application okay so when i did my own application for instance i've been in the uk for over 12 months when i did apply for my tier 2 visa I didn't provide proof of funds they didn't even ask for it okay yeah so but because my husband is outside the country I need he needs to provide proof of funds so if the applicant is outside the person needs to provide proof of funds the good thing about this is that the proof of funds can either be your either either, either of mm -hmm. us it can be either the main applicant or the dependent the account. yeah in the account it can be the um account so um when he was doing his what i did his application anyways so when i was doing that during the proof of funds they asked a question about um did they asked him you know if i provided proof of funds during my whatever then i said no so when i said no that was why the in the document checklist they said that he has to provide proof of funds but i know if i did because they didn't ask me i'm sure probably i don't know they would have omitted that so he needed to provide proof of funds now when he was now doing his application there is a place that they will ask you to put additional information towards the end uh, when i was doing the application one thing i did say there is that I did not so I will, of course it was his application so more like he was the one saying it that myself I did not provide proof of funds during my application but he will be using my statement of account to show his proof of funds and it will be attached to his application so we made that statement during the place as a place where they will ask you if you have any additional information you want to give probably to back up your information uh, your application and my advice will be it doesn't have to be about proof of funds if there is anything you know that you think is not clear yeah you can actually add it at that point make sure you use that box to explain yourself so i did put in there that i did not provide my proof of funds but i'll be using my own account of course he was one saying it because it was his application so in essence um i was the one that provided so i sent him my statement of account mm -hmm. and of course that was and he printed it off when he went to do his biometrics at um, ikeja mm -hmm. that was when he provided that so that is it about proof of funds and of course if you go to the government website you will see the amount so in there um you if it's for your partner so for his proof of funds all we needed was 285 pounds 
Tier 2 visa, the dependent visa is so lovely. I'm not just tier 2. I think every visa, most times, the proof of funds for the dependents are not usually much because if it were to be the student, for instance, if you are coming on tier 4 visa, you find out that the student has to provide proof of school fees, first year school fees, accommodation, and all of that. Well, even for uh, dependents on tier 4, you also need to provide... Um, yeah accommodation cost of living and all of that but for tier 2 dependent visa your proof of funds is just 285 pounds okay for the um, dependent then if you are coming with a child it is 315 pounds and then another child is 200 pounds what this means is that if you are maybe you you have a partner your partner and one child they will just um be 285 and 315 but if it is your partner and a child or a, 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 your partner and two children, yeah. you will have to provide 285, 315, and 200 pounds. Yeah. And then if it is four children, 285, 315, 200, yeah. 200. That's how it works. So in that case, I was one that used because it was more convenient at that time to use my own account, of course, to provide the proof of phone. So it can be that way. Whoever is here, you can use your um, statement of account or if your partner has enough money. And another thing that we must not forget is that the money has to be in the account for a continuous 28 days okay so it has to be in the account before applying you know before you apply so you have to make sure that that money has been the equivalence of 285 pounds must have been in the account for a continuous 28 days period then you can now apply for your visa and the money has to be there until the decision is made okay so because so many things are involved that was one of the reasons we felt that it will be better to use my own account and that's it about proof of funds it's pretty quite straightforward so another thing that uh, another question that you guys asked was about <coughs> documents okay you guys asked us about documents about marriage certificate someone asked if marriage certificate was enough because people are saying that people can force certificates and it is not enough at this point i think i'll leave husband man to answer that um, about certificates and um, what we use in our application all right um for the application really what you need is um, the marriage certificate i think it's more than enough of course we explained earlier that Anyone return in, in an Orthodox church, like, a, like an Anglican church, your certificate is valid, right? So that's what we used anyway. And we know some friends really that that applied that way. Just married sat alone, nothing more, and they got approved. And I have one again that said, ah, for me, I did not use just my certificate. I just added a few pictures. And he said, I said, really? I added a few pictures and it was approved. So it is not the preacher that validates the marriage certificate. Yeah. It's not at all. What they want to check is once they confirm your name on your visa, as in if your wife is the main applicant, her name and then your own name, they confirm this. They say your parents' signature, the church where you wedded, and your coat of arm. So that's enough. So even if you add pictures, it does not really change anything. Yeah. The main thing is that these guys are very intelligent. They know what they are doing. They check. And once again, I, at, at a point when that name was an issue, the name, the child's and the favor <laughs> came in. I was like, God, you know, we're not, we're, we're genuine, really. That was, that, that was my prayer point. I told God, we are genuine. Anyone that will be in charge of looking at this application, as in the um, entry clearance officer, the ECO, I'll be in charge of looking at this uh, document. We know that we are very genuine. There's nothing wrong here. Favor is, is her name. That's also my name, so that is it. So, Marisat is very, very um, much enough. And then, if you wish to add pictures, and they said it's not more than, like I, had to, I saw a document too, you know, when the issue of um, BRP was coming in, so I had to do more research. I kept on digging, and I, had, I got to a document where it was written clearly that um, I want to add pictures. This, has, this one is for family visas, anyway. I want to add pictures, not more than 10 pictures, not more than 10. You know, so just 10 pictures will be in A4, it must be in A4, then just 10 pictures will be enough. So that's it. Just two pages of stuff can cover 10 pictures, and that's how you want to add pictures. But without that, all these people add, they ask you to add WhatsApp chat, you know, <laughs> communication stuff, all those things will be very valid in the family visa. If you're joining a British citizen here, yeah, mm -hmm. want to join them, in that case, it's very sensitive. They, 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 they are very much out to see that the application is correct. But for the Vietnam visa, yeah, marriage is enough and make sure 
it is the one gotten from an Orthodox church, or make sure you decide your marriage in court. The court, the court that's, that's what you need, and that's all for the marriage certificate. Yeah, because we did say it in our last video that Orthodox churches, like they have, um, I don't know how what's the word, how to put it, but they are supported. The marriage certificate you are issued at um, maybe an Orthodox church, you yes. find out that it has a Nigerian coat of arm, yes. not as that is a legal document. Yes, yes. And before any any you Orthodox must, church yes. will actually give you that certificate, you must have gone to the local government and yes. registered yes. your marriage. Yes. Then you come back and show them proof that your marriage is already registered with the government. Yes. Then they will give the you that certificate. Yes. So you don't necessarily have to. So Pentecostal churches and other churches are like where you wed or maybe some people have not even done church wedding we have friends we have yes. a friend who they've not they, not friend we have people many of them really they did not do their church wedding, church wedding. white wedding just all they did is they did their traditional marriage they went to court and they did their court wedding they are legally married yes, they is. are married okay that's it <laughs> i don't want to talk about that that's a different subject but they are they are married and of course they are here already because all they need is that legal document about marriage so don't use the one someone asked me about the one that the church gives don't use the one that your church gave you if not if it's not an orthodox church okay of course if you're church anglican marriage, catholic and methodist like has that has it as well redeemed. yeah if right yeah i'm marriage, not sure but you should yes, know mm -hmm. confirm so if you know that your church has that one just confirm mm -hmm. then that is a legal document but please if it's just the one that your church gave you that you are married mm -hmm. and it's not like the one approved by the government please don't use that one it's not valid and of course if you check government website uk government website a partner okay is could be your someone that you are in a civil relationship yes. with yes. that is marriage you've gone to court and you registered your your marriage or your child okay and of course of course when we're talking about child is someone that is less than 18 years, years. if the person is more than 18 years you have to provide yes. evidence yes. that the person is not married yes. and the person is living with you that person yes. is still under you yes. okay that's uh, if the person is more than 18 years and the person is also someone that you have be, you have be, so here in the uk Okay, that's what they call partners okay so a partner if you've been living with someone for two years yeah. and you are not even married yeah. okay that person is your partner and of course that person can be your dependent but you need to provide proof that that person is your partner and that you've been living together for the past two years they will see that both of you are actually partners and, and that a, person that's why you need more proof in that case you yes need you need more proof add, so i don't add your transactions when she send money to you yeah you together, your address you together yes you know pictures of your ad not your just pictures team. address that, that one is more complicated so I see no reason why I think it's better to go to court mm -hmm. and just register your marriage. Okay. So people come over here, then they do their white wedding. Yeah, right, yeah. That's what people do. Up. Yeah, we have one wedding coming up. Mm -hmm. People that did their trial and of course they've done their court wedding. Mm -hmm. They are here. They are planning a white wedding here in the UK. People do that a lot of, of times. Okay. So that's it about the certificate and um, proof. So whether you use pictures or not. So to address that issue that people say that they right, that it can be for, forged. People okay. can fake marriage. Is it not pictures that people cannot no, fake. fake which one can you fake easily <laughs> yeah you can easily fake, fake pictures, pictures very, well. Yeah. very well you can fake whatsapp chats and mm -hmm. all of that but it's very it's rarely it's more difficult to fake that authentic marriage certificate that you get from court so i think it's more than enough people have applied okay without any pictures okay without anything just their marriage certificate that's the proof of your relationship and it's 100 percent valid your visa will not be denied because of that and in case you didn't watch the last video of course our own our names there were some you know issues with our names but that still didn't match but of course we prayed about it and god actually answered so that's it about all those other documents so the next thing we want to talk about in this video is immigration health surcharge. People didn't really ask that question, but I felt it's something that we have to address. I've said it in one of my videos that because I'm a skilled worker and social work is eligible under the health and care visa, so I was exempted from paying immigration health surcharge. I did pay it when I applied because I wasn't sure if I'm eligible, but then because they found that I'm a social worker and I'm eligible, they refunded the money back to me. And because of that, during uh, your dependent visa application when i was doing my husband's application they asked if 
I'm eligible, the main applicant is eligible for health and care visa. And of course, if you say yes, you won't pay for IHS during your application. If you say no, then at the end of the day, when you go further to the payment option, then they will give you the cost of IHS, depending on the number of years. So I was given three years visa, yeah, three years visa. So I think uh, for the pendant, I can't remember. I'll put it on the screen when I remember. But health surcharge is a certain amount per year. Okay, it's per year. So for for that three years, then it had it been is four hundred pounds. My husband would have paid one thousand two hundred pounds plus the application fee. That would be what would have paid before the application would be completed. But because I am eligible for health and care visa, that means I'm exempted from paying immigration health surcharge. I said yes, I'm eligible. At that end, the only thing that we paid for was the application fee. My husband didn't pay for IHS. So depending on the job role, but most job roles really here, most times, nursing, uh, all these health days, support work, all these health care, yeah, all these health care jobs, even if it's a care home, most times they're actually eligible for health and care visa. Mm -hmm. In that case, mm -hmm. you will not need to pay mm -hmm. IHS. So the trick is, if the main applicant didn't pay for IHS or wasn't mm -hmm. required to pay IHS, IHS, then the dependent would not have to pay. And of course, I said no, that I said yes, that I'm eligible. We didn't pay for that and it didn't affect our decision. Of course, you can see he's right here with me in the UK already. All right. Um, before we end this video, I'd like to um, remind us or tell those that we're using the assistance service. You know, you need, you need to scan your documents and upload for you. If you get into um, the TLS contact um, office. Um, office. Once you get in, make sure you get all your documents out and hold them in your hands. You know, so that you don't forget any documents and you don't give them. No, I had somebody and she forgot her TB test. And that TB test is somehow, you know, you know it's, it's kept in their own um, envelope. So somehow you just leave it there, you forget. It must happen yeah. to me. I forgot. You know, you know when, he, when, he, when he was scanning and I said, okay, need a document. I just remembered quickly. I ran and brought it out. And I was like, I did it. So please don't forget, make sure all your documents, TV tests, all of them should be out. Don't let anyone be in a separate envelope. Let it be out together. Once you give them, once you hand it over to him, make sure you check your bag and confirm that you have taken out all your documents. If not, you might forget one very important, important document. document. Yeah. They will ask you, once they send you NSF as a non straightforward meal, means that your, your decision time will will be extended. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, if they require more documents. Days, yeah. Not the working days to get a document and then continue with mm. your application. Once they send that mail to you, maybe extend it a little. Mm. So that you don't forget anything at all. Make sure all of them are together. That's why it's been good to do self service. If you have a document with you, do self service. But if you don't have it, make sure you take all the documents assisted out. Assisted service, then, then go for assisted service. Yeah, yeah, because when you go for the assisted service, you just have to have the document on staple everything, mm -hmm. give them, they will scan it, and scan that's it. The, of course, they won't really the check with you if there is anything more. Anything you need. Yeah, they won't check with you. It doesn't consign them. Give yeah. them all you want. They will scan it. Mm -hmm. You've paid for it. You've paid. Once you give them, and it, even if your documents are 200 documents you came with, they will scan it. They will scan you, everything. Paid. Yeah, you that's true. It. Okay, guys, um, and finally, um, just to talk about TB test, somebody asked this question, but of course, in case you've not watched that video, go and watch it. So for my husband, he did walk in. So yes. he walked in, okay? He didn't book because he forgot. And when we now finally rem remembered TB test and we wanted to book, we are seeing dates in August. And this was happening in May, ending of mm -hmm. May. Yeah. That was when we were looking for the date and we were seeing August and God forbid, there's no way he will come in August. So all he did was by faith, prayerfully, he went there and of course he walked in. Um, The story is too long. He actually shared it in that last video, but during the editing, we found that the video was too long. We had to edit it out, but there were so many stories. But yeah, you can do walking. Um, of course, I want to believe you might be lucky, you might not. I don't know if they have stopped it, but it's possible. It's Before possible. we went, we asked people. People yeah. said that they, they did walk in. Yeah. Yeah, so people make sure you it. go through the inquiry line. Just and enter the inquiry line. Early. Go very early. Join the inquiry line. When you enter, once you get to the person to attend to you, the, the workers there, one of them, just explain to them, you need to do this today. She will give you a written note straight. You go back and then that's Make how you the walk payments. In. And that is it. Just join the inquiry line, you get in. 
yeah mm -hmm. so that's it guys i want to believe that you've enjoyed this video okay please if you did don't forget to give a thumbs up like this video hit the subscribe button to yeah. join this family we have loads of interesting content still cool. coming your way and share this video with as many people that you think might need it and please leave your comments in the comment section do you yes, have further questions yeah. anything you still want to know let's know in the comment section i will be seeing you in the next one until then stay blessed remain intentional and take care of yourself Bye. Bye.